Mitchell McLennigan is still with me now to break down the two matches today, as well as Mike Hesson, the birthday boy, joining us from Dubai. G'day, Hess. How's your birthday going? Yeah, it's going pretty well. Thanks, Laura. Nice to see you again tonight and, uh, and you as well, Mitchie. Happy birthday, mate. Thanks, mate. <laughs> that was lovely, wasn't it? Hey, Hess, I'd love your thoughts first up on that matchup, England Australia. Disappointing. I thought it might have been a, a slightly harder fought game. Uh, Australia would be gutted, I imagine, as they head to the dugout tonight. Well, it probably shows the gap between the two sides in terms of where they're at from a form perspective. You know, Australia showed some glimpses last game uh, from a top order point of view, but outside of that, they've been a bit off the mark, especially with the bat. And today there was just a little bit on the surface and they were exposed, um, you know, in terms of Chris Wokes, Jordan, uh, even Adil Rashid in the power play. Three wickets in the power play and they were behind the game. And then from there, to be fair, Aaron Finch did his best. But, I mean, one 125 was never going to be enough against a powerful England side. And it is a powerful England side. Joss Butler there, 71 off 32 balls with five sixes. Mitch, you've played a lot of cricket with him at Mumbai. He is some player, hey? Oh, he's 100%. After spending time with him at Mumbai, he's... 100% my favourite player. Seeing what he can do in games and in the nets, he's just like the penultimate um, person that you look to like as an opening batsman um, in world cricket really now. He's, he's destructive in front of the wicket, behind 360, and you saw like Stark was trying to like uh, have third man fine leg back to take that out of play and he slaps him over mid-wicket or over mid-off. I thought he was sensational. And I think that partnership that he's got with Jason Roy um, works really well. Um, as a bowler, that's probably the most fearful partnership in world cricket at the minute, in T20 cricket in particular, and particularly the way they play. Joss sits a long way back in the crease and stays on his stumps more often than not to slap you and squirt you and hit different angles, where uh, Jason Roy will advance at you to kind of get momentum into the shot. So one comes at you and one sits back. You know, what do you do? What do you do, Hess? Now, what do you do if you're Justin Langer, the Australian coach, and why are you not playing Mitchell Marsh? I mean, there's a lot of chat around, should he be replacing Steve Smith? Should Steve Smith even be in the T20 team at the moment? According to Shane Warne, absolutely not. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it just depends if you want to have a safety net, and that appears to be what Steve Smith's role is, is a safety net if they lose an early wicket. Um, and, and therefore, you're almost starting the game from a negative perspective. And, you know, Mitchell Marsh throughout all the warm-up games um, throughout the last two tours has batted at three. He's done pretty well. And then all of a sudden, he's not playing this game, and, and obviously Agar's come in. Um, so the whole structure's changed a little bit. So it just looks a little bit um, clumsy in terms of the lineup or in terms of you know, how they want to play their game. And, and I guess the one thing with Australia is you don't normally align them with a defensive mindset. And even if they do lose two or three wickets, you tend to see that they keep going after the game. At this point in the tournament, does net run rate really start to become an issue, do you think, Mitchell? Oh, look, I, I think it does, um, particularly for those teams like South Africa and Australia who are going to be fighting for that last spot. Um, Look, I think England have just been unbelievable. They've just blown everyone out of the water. I, I, someone needs to tell them that their net run rate's not going to carry through to the semi-finals, and just to make some games a little bit closer. Um, they've just been outstanding. And, yeah, it's going to be a long uphill battle for Australia to kind of make that top two spot from here. When we talk about Mitchell Marsh's hitting and his power in the batting lineup, we haven't talked about his bowling. And, yes, I think it was you who mentioned that actually he was, he was finding his rhythm a bit more with his bowling coming into this tournament. So do you think they're missing him as well? Oh, from a batting perspective, absolutely they are. Um, uh, he would take a lot of pressure off Finch at the top of the order. Um, Finch uh, needs that hitter around him, particularly when he's trying to find some form at the minute. Um, and then having, like as, as Hess alluded to, like having Steve Smith come in, then Finch has got to be that aggressive aggressor and make a play. Um, otherwise, they're just going to run a ball. So he's critical to their lineup. Otherwise, they've got to really switch it up and put Stoinis and Inglis up towards the top of the order and then play Marsh again. It's still in that side but batting a little bit further down. So, Hess, I imagine there's some very excited uh, New Zealand bowlers after watching the England-Australia match at the same ground they'll be playing at tomorrow morning. Look, I think so. I think the fact that the ball seamed was great, but I think it also swung in the air. So it offers, you know, all that New Zealand seam attack some, I guess, some ammunition to attack the Indian top order, who we know is so powerful. So, you know, I think the record for New Zealand against India is generally because we've been able to get some movement with the new ball. And if we can do that, as I said, we can make some inroads, then that gives us a really good chance. And I think Dubai Stadium is probably our best opportunity in terms of taking on India. Would you agree with that, uh, Mitch? 
Yeah, definitely. I think um, we've touched on it before. Southie needs that new ball to swing and, and bolts at his most dangerous um, when that new ball is swinging. Um, if we get a couple of early ones, hopefully, um, fingers crossed um, that East Shoddy and Mitch Satner play together again. Um, and they've just been phenomenal during the middle. And we get a couple of early ones and they get a couple in the middle. It just makes that death phase a hell of a lot easier for, for our bowlers towards the back end with such destructive lower order batsmen that India possess. So we'll definitely see Adam Milne tomorrow in action for the Black Caps again, do you think? Oh, well, there was chat that he was going to play that first game instead of Sodi um, before the ICC um, said he wasn't going to be able to uh, be available um, for that game. Um, I find that really interesting. I think if he's going to play, I think he's got to play instead of someone like a Seifert. Um, it will shorten our batting lineup, but I, I just don't think going into a clutch game against India that you can rely on four overs from Jimmy Neesham. He's done really well, obviously, the last game, but I just think it's a little bit of a risk uh, putting so much... Um, onus on your batting all-rounder. Uh, now we have lost Hess over in Dubai there with the internet connection but we'll catch up with again, him again in this tournament of course. Um, Mitch I'd also love your take on uh, the Black Caps batting lineup. So if Seifert goes out does that change anything for you with Conway? I mean would like to see maybe Nisham. I know you and I talked at length about him coming in at four. It didn't pay off the other night. Um, how do you imagine the lineup going for the Black Caps? Uh, yeah, look, I, if Milne comes in, hopefully he comes in, in for Seifert. Um, it is, like I said, it's going to shorten the batting order, but I think they're just going to stick with that lineup that they, they put out the other day. I think uh, most successful T20 teams have, have consistency. Um, in one game, I don't think they're going to change a whole lot. Um, it was great to see um, Guppy and, and Mitch uh, bat really well at the top, and I thought um, Daryl's taking the opportunity. Um, he's usually batting at six, uh, which is probably the hardest spot in all of that uh, T20 batting order, and, and he's probably going to absolutely loving it being at the top. You've got freedom. You've only got to beat a fielder and chip it over the top, and there's less guys out on the boundary, so he'll be really enjoying that role. I am really excited about the matchup, which of course you can watch on Sky Sport 3, 3am 3 tomorrow morning, Black Caps taking on India. But I'm a little bit nervous because it's only game two for the Black Caps. They've watched a lot of cricket, but it's already a must-win match. How will they be preparing? How would you prepare for a second-up must-win match in a World Cup? I mean, it's a great position to be in. Um, it's exciting. This is almost finals footy already, or finals cricket. <laughs> um, you know, like, uh, whoever loses this game is really going to potentially struggle to go through unless um, Afghan upsets the person who wins this game um, going forward in the tournament. So I think they're going to have to prepare really, really well. Um, having a few days off is probably going to be uh, really good for them to be able to focus and work on stuff in training, specific stuff. They can learn a lot from that Pakistan uh, performance, um, particularly Bolt. Uh, we know he's going to try and knock over um, KL and Rohit just like Shaheen did the other day. And, and if the conditions, as he said, are going to be favourable, then that's positive as well. And they would have learnt a lot from tonight's conditions as well. And so, Mitch, I'd just lastly love your predictions for tomorrow's matchup uh, New Zealand versus India. Who's your money on? Uh, the heart says New Zealand, 100%. I just think um, we're going to be too good at the top with the ball in those conditions that we saw tonight. And I think uh, we'll keep them to a score and we'll chase it down handsomely. Oh, you love to hear it. And you will be able to see it tomorrow. But first up, 11 o'clock tonight, it is Namibia taking on Afghanistan. That is Sky Sport 3. And then New Zealand taking on India, the big one for us Kiwis. You don't want to miss it. 3 a.m. Sky Sport 3. We'll be up watching and then we will tell you all about it, give you all the highlights uh, at 7.30 tomorrow morning here on Sky Sport. We'll see you then.